Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Introduction to Distance Time Graphs. Here is an example of a distance time graph where the time goes across the horizontal axis and the distance across the vertical axis. As well, we have labelled the graph with the points A to F which are going to help us split this graph into different stages to explain what is going on at each stage. Now, distance time graphs typically represent journeys. So on this journey we start at the point A located at the origin and the first stage of our journey is the stage A to B. During this stage we can see that the distance increases linearly with respect to time and this means that between A and B we are travelling with constant speed. Another way of saying this is to say that between A and B the acceleration equals zero. So this is a very important point where we have constant speed the acceleration equals zero. It is also worth noting that distance time graphs can be nonlinear. For example, if the graph from one of the stages is a curve instead of a straight line, the acceleration for this stage will not be zero. The next stage of our journey is the stage B to C, and we notice that there's no change in the distance. So therefore, between B and C we are stationary. So the speed between B and C equals zero. Now the stage C to D is like the stage A to B. So between C and D we are travelling with constant speed and the acceleration between C and D equals zero. And likewise the stage D to E is similar to the stage B to C. So between D and E we are stationary and the speed equals zero. And that then brings us on to our final stage of the journey E to F, where F is the final point or the end point of our journey. And if we look at the stage E to F, we can see that the distance now it decreases linearly with respect to time, so it actually goes to zero. So therefore the stage E to F represents our journey back to the initial position. And on this journey back we are again travelling with constant speed. And therefore the acceleration between E and F also equals zero. Now we're going to consider the stage C to D. Specifically, we want the gradient between C and D. And in order to get the gradient, we first need the run and the rise. And if we recall the formula for the gradient, the gradient between two points equals its rise divided by its run, or the difference in y divided by the difference in x. But for a distance time graph, the rise actually corresponds to the distance and the run, it corresponds to the time. So the gradient of a distance time graph equals the rise over the run, which equals the distance divided by the time. So keep this in mind for a moment. We're now going to introduce a very important formula linking speed, distance and time together. That is, speed equals distance divided by the time. And now we can link these two formulas together. We said that the gradient equals the rise over the run, but for a distance time graph, that equals the distance over the time, which equals the speed. Therefore, the gradient of a distance time graph equals the speed. So if we come to the stage A to B, the gradient of the line AB equals the speed that we travel from A to B. And the gradient of the line BC equals the speed from B to C. Now, we already know that the speed between B and C equals zero, since we are stationary between B and C. But we can confirm this by recalling that the gradient of a horizontal line equals zero. This illustrates how knowing the gradient can allow us to state the speed. Coming on to the gradient of the line EF, it would not be correct to say that it equals the speed. This is because the speed is a positive quantity whereas the gradient of EF is negative, since the distance decreases linearly with respect to time. Therefore, we say that the gradient of EF equals the velocity, because the velocity can be a negative quantity. So now that we have given a meaning to this distance time graph, we can use what we have learned so far to have a go at some questions. Let's take a look at this example now. In this example we are given, Jim left home at 13.00 and drove to a lake 25 miles away. 
he arrived at the lake at 13.45 and stayed for 75 minutes. Jim then drove home, arriving home at 16.00. We are also given that Jim's journey to and from the lake was at constant speed and we are asked to draw a distance time graph for Jim's journey. Since Jim's journey to and from the lake was at constant speed, we know that the graphs for his journey to the lake and from the lake will be linear. So first of all we need our horizontal and vertical axis. We'll have the time of day across the horizontal axis and the distance from home in miles across the vertical axis. So miles because in the question the distance is given in miles. Next, if we look at the question, we're told that Jim left home at 13.00, so our journey starts at 13.00, and at the end he arrives home at 16.00, so this is when the journey ends. So when we come to the time of day, we're going to start at 13.00, and we're going to take one hour interval, so next is going to be 14.00, 15.00, and then we're going to finish at 16.00. And if we look at the hour interval, I have split each hour into four pieces. So one hour is 60 minutes, so each part here is worth 15 minutes. And you can do this in many different ways, but the reason I've done so is because if we look at the other times given, we're told that he arrives at the lake at 13.45, and here the 45 is a multiple of 15, and he stays at the lake for 75 minutes, which is one hour, 15 minutes, so again a multiple of 15. So therefore, each step here within the hour is worth 15 minutes. So the scaling is always very important and it's something that you must consider when completing these kind of questions. Moving on to the distance, all we're told is that he travels to a lake 25 miles away. So he's going to start at 0 miles away from home and he's going to go up to 25. So here I've just done in 5, so 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. And if we look between 0 and 5, we have 5 steps, so each step is worth 1 mile. Now, drawing the graph, we know that the journey starts at 13.00, so we're going to just mark this point here. And we know that he drives to the lake, that's 25 miles away, and he arrives there at 13.45. So if we take 13.45, well that's going to be 3 lots here, so 13.45 will be somewhere on this line and he drives to the lake 25 miles away so we're going to just mark this point here and then the first stage of his journey we draw by just joining these two points in a straight line like so. Next we're told that Jim arrived at the lake at 1345 and stayed for 75 minutes therefore Jim stayed at the lake from 3045 until 1500 so 75 minutes is 1 hour 15, so 15 minutes, and then 1 hour, it takes us to 15.00. So we mark the point here, and of course he is stationary at the lake, so there's no distance covered, therefore the distance here is still at 25 miles, and all we do is we just join these two points together. And then we come on to the final stage of Jim's journey. We're told that Jim then drove home, arriving home, at 16.00. So in order to go home he will need to travel 25 miles and he arrives home at 16.00. So here's 16.00 we just mark that point and then all we do is we just join these two points together like so and that then completes this question. So in this example we were given information and we had to use this information to draw a distance time graph. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.